Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? My name is Kelly Bowker. I am a retired registered nurse and teacher, and I'm also a medium, a channel, and a light language worker. Um, this has all developed for me over the past year. It has been very incredible. It's been quite an amazing journey. And I'm here to just talk about the opening up that has happened. Well, Kelly, it's great to have you on. We've just been talking quite a bit there off air in regards to the journey that you've you've taken which um is a pretty much fast track journey from what i'm i'm taking with everything that you've told me and um this is happening more and more right now i want to just sort of you know tell your story in this interview so let's just get straight into that part as well now um i think you've always had a connection with i mean you would call it the divine god source just very briefly, you know, in those early years, what was that connection when you look back now? Was it there? Oh, well, being a, a girl from a small town in Maine, and it's a Baptist town, I was born a seeker. There's no question in my mind that I was a seeker. And I always had this idea, you know, this this feeling that there was more. And in my world, the place that I could go was the Baptist church. And so I did. And so I was introduced to spirit through the Holy Spirit. And when I would pray and when I would connect to God, my heart would just expand and I would feel, I would feel that love. I would feel that energy. I thought everyone did. I didn't realize that, that it, that everyone didn't. And it created some conflict because I had such a visceral experience of that connection to source energy at the time, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. And I still love Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Um, but I had such a physical reaction to them and whatnot that, that when I would go to church and the pastor would talk about the love of Jesus and the love of mankind, I would just expand. And then he would go on to tell me that all my Catholic friends were going to hell, all my you know, any other religion was going to hell. We were the only ones going to heaven. And I always just knew that wasn't true. But I, because I had that physical reaction to it, to the spirit, I thought if that part is true, then maybe this other piece is true too. The, so it set up a tremendous conflict within me, to be honest. I, I, the love resonated, the love always resonated. And I tried to just not pay too much attention to the rest of it. You know, I mean, all the rules and regulations and the dogma and the sin and the making Jesus cry. I mean, being raised, being told you're the devil, devil's daughter if you don't do things right. You know, it was a lot to overcome, which created within me certainly conflicts. But I I lived with that for, for quite a long time. And I, I just practiced what I learned very young to go by what felt right in my heart. And that's what I say to all of you. 
when things resonate, when you feel that spirit move inside of you, you know you're on the right track. So I just tried to follow that as best as I could. And I would dip my toe into something metaphysical. And then that dogmatic rules and regulations would knock me in the head and I'd pull back again. So it it took until just a, about a year and a half or so ago now, a little over a year ago, was when um, I, I mean, fast forward, I wasn't okay. We'd gone through COVID. I was trying to teach during COVID. It was really, really difficult. And I wasn't okay. I was, I, my normal happy bubbly self was feeling disconnected and, and I, I call it a half a bubble off plum. And I decided to do some counseling. And within that counseling time, I did a lot of internal work. She introduced me to healing the inner child, which is so important that I had read dozens and dozens of self-help books and never had resonated with healing the inner child, but, but it was time and I did. And then she planted the seed when she said to me, um, I want you to look up what it means to be an empath. And that made me look into the, the metaphysical world and the court come out of the genie's bottle and the rest is history. It all started to happen really, really fast. Well, thank you. So you've always had that, you know, kind of care inside to your work. You know, you, you're a retired nurse. You were a teacher teaching the CNA course. Um, yeah, you've always you've always been into trying to help others. So let's get to this point where, as you've just said there, you know, the, obviously the COVID was the breaking point in a sense for you to uh, say, look, this is not for me anymore. I'm not happy. And uh, th there must be something else. There is something else. Let's get into meditation because I think that was also a part of your journey that really you would still say to this day is an important part of the development of what you've, uh, what you've become basically. Yes, absolutely. I would say to anybody that is trying to connect to this part of themselves that we all have, meditation is certainly the key. And again, like I said, I was a seeker and I, I mean, read lots and lots of books. I wanted to know what made people tick. I, I always had a, a big interest in, in that. Um, and I, probably I would say about five or six years ago, I I got sick. I wasn't healthy. And, and one thing after another was happening. And I, in all of the books that I'd read up to this time, there would be two sections I'd get to that I would skip. If they talked about the inner child, I was like, yeah, that's not for me. And if they talked about meditation, because my brain goes a hundred all the time, just like everyone's. And there was no way I could settle myself down to meditate. And anytime I tried to, I had that voice in the back of my head saying, you can't surrender your brain you can, because the devil will take you over. You mustn't surrender. So that always played a part in the whole thing too, to be honest. But at this time, I had been sick, like I say, four or five years ago, I'd been sick and my lungs were really debilitated. And like a typical Kelly moment is if I need to know something, I dive into the internet and I figure it out. And so I was asking Google, how do I strengthen my lungs? And I happened on to Wim Hof. And Wim Hof teaches all kinds of great stuff. Look him up. He's a really cool, interesting guy. Um, but his breathing technique basically combines hyperoxygenation with hypoxia. So you overoxygenate and then you underoxygenate. And it had an effect on me. And there are these, these rounds that you do. And I would be flying out, just flying. And I started to stretch those flying times. And I started to realize that the, the breathing, and there are many meditation techniques that combine breathing and, and whatnot, that the breathing was the doorway to meditation. And so I was meditating regularly. And now looking back, I know that my guides and my team were trying desperately to get my attention. Lots of really, really out there things started to happen as time went on, and I was able I was able to meditate for hours if I chose to. and i could I could literally open my mind. I could get into a place in my mind where the first time that it happened, it was a little hole, and I was looking through this little hole into the night sky. 
I could see the sparkling stars beyond that, beyond that hole. And I got all excited and whoop, the hole went away. And it took time to develop the, the focus ability that that opened and opened and opened until it finally fell right away. And I was within that night sky. And I would, I would cry. I, and I would, I would feel um, that I think it's out of the 23rd Psalm and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever would always come into my mind because I felt like I was at the feet of God is what it felt like. I was one. I was one. So this was all happening before, before the, the, before uh, the January. So I'm meditating along and honestly, a very important other aspect comes into play about this same time. Now, fast forwarding, I've been meditating. I've had my counseling. I've been introduced to healing the inner child, which is such an important part of this work. You have to heal in order for the energy to be able to come through. You have to bring your energy to where they can meld with you. And if you if you don't, they're not going to be able to. It's just as simple as that, I, I believe. But <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, um, have been going through counseling. The the lady planted the seed about become being an empath, and so I'm starting to learn about all these different things. And I have a coworker who had lost a daughter, and a, a 19 year old daughter in a tragic accident. And now I know that this young woman, um, her name was Cindy. This young woman played a part all along through that five years of meditation, trying to get my attention, and. Um, my friend, the day that my friend said in front of me, I I had always, she said, I'd always wished after she passed away that I could go to a medium. And I said, well, why didn't you? And she said, because I was afraid God would be mad at me. And I was afraid she wouldn't come through. And that broke my heart. It just landed so hard in my heart. I can't even tell you. So when all of this momentum of opening up was happening, I quickly figured out I was going to be a medium, that I was going to be the person that could bring this mother and daughter back together again. And I was. And it was it was such a blessing. It was wonderful. Was that this time you talk about when um, you've mentioned it before, sort of January 2022, because it's happened so quickly for yourself. Um, so we've you know, you've got the medium. January, side opening. January is when I channeled the first time. So I was meditating and having all of these weird things happening. And I went online and I found somebody who, who talked about automatic writing. And so it was really cool because I'd be walking down the hall to meditate. And I would just, I'd, you know, now I know they were whispering in my ears. They'd say, lights on. Oh, meditate with lights on. That's an idea. And I'd do it. It'd say, music, no music. Every day it'd be something different. Sit up, lay down. They wanted me to be able to alter my mind. They had me in training. I can now, when I, my first book, you can see they had me in training to be able to sit up, alter my consciousness and interact with people. But then it's also the trusting of that voice as well. What was allowing you to trust oh, it yeah. to say that, hang on, because obviously you come from a very dogmatic, you know, strictly yes. religious upbringing, which was all there for a reason. Yes. What, what was allowing you to trust it then and say, well, am I, oh, you know, yeah. is this is this part of the madness, the onset of madness? You know, do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. I said I I hadn't told my husband any of this up to this point. And I would say in my head, what to hell does crazy look like? What does crazy look like? You know? So I'm trying to do the automatic writing and I can't spell. I have I'm a teacher, the whole nine yards. I can't spell. It's just a learning disability that I have. I cannot spell. So I would get altered and I would start writing their message and I would feel it flow and I'd get to a word that I couldn't spell and it would pull me out of meditation. Now I can I can automatic write anytime I want to. But back then it, it didn't work. So <clears throat> I had been doing having these, I mean, oh my gosh, in my meditations, I'd feel a smack on my hand. I'd feel tickle tickles up my cheeks. I'd feel Oh my God, energy just roll through my body, just roll, shake and tremble. And oh, so many physical sensations. Couldn't do the automatic writing. And then I remembered, I remembered, my guides let, dropped it into my mind. When I did the inner child work, I used my iPhone because she, my, my, th my therapist said to journal to my inner child. 
the same thing. I would get into that altered state of really connecting with my inner child. I'd try to write a word that I couldn't spell and it would frig everything up. So they said, record. And when I'm, when I, that comes to my mind, I'm like, that means I'm going to be talking. And they're like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Ooh, okay, <laughs> we're going to give it a shot. So I went into meditation. My hubby was gone for the weekend. So I had all kinds of time to, to just get myself ready. And I went into meditation. I laid my phone on my chest, got myself quite altered. And I just started to say, let the words come, let the words come, let the words come, let the words come. And then they, they were in my mind and they said, step into that space because it was that that black space, that night sky, step into that sacred space, let the words come, come, let the words come. And then boom, I started to talk. And that first time I did have an accent, my voice sounded very, very funny. And but it's only been that one time. And um, I tried to ask questions out loud. So I can, if, if you can imagine, like you say, crazy, I can hear my voice talking. And I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> And, and I'm really overwhelmed trying to, they keep saying, because when I get to what listening, it would mess it up. So then I'd, I'd, I'd push myself out again and it would start going good. And then I'd hear something they'd say and I'd come back. Oh my gosh, it was nuts. When I tried to ask the question out loud, they said in my mind, ask us in your mind and we will repeat it on your recording. They're very accommodating. It's quite amazing, really. And so I think a question in my mind you know, I, what, what is your name? You know, I asked them, what is your name? And they said, you have asked the question, what is our name? We will call ourselves La Cruz. And that was, that was how they came through. And in that first channeling, my mother came through and spoke. Um, it was incredible. And it was part of that healing the inner child. It was the validation. She and I talked woman to woman about the, the reality, I loved my mom, had a great relationship with my mom. But the truth is, when I was a kid, my mother neglected me. And it did because I was an empath and no one knew what an empath was, or at least none of my world did. Um, all of that really, really did lay down some tapes and some beliefs and things in me that shaped me, shaped my life. Well, that was nice that you could have that sort of one-to-one -one with it and, and the proof to yourself no one else but just to yourself that you know life continues mum's okay <laughs> mum's on our journey oh. Yeah, yeah oh my god i can tell you life continues there's no question yeah absolutely and 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 um mum's okay and uh did you and that she was okay with me acknowledging that she didn't do it all right that was the part i had well, such a, a beautiful part, adult relationship mm. yeah i for me to be able to say to my brothers, to my family, to, you know, you know, I got left all the time. I was the baby and I was a mistake and she prayed for a friggin' miscarriage. So even in utero, I'm in this belly being formed, every one of my cells being formed with this woman who is praying she will have a miscarriage. And I know I was a blessing in my mother's life. I know I was certainly, but as a child, I was born, I was born sickly, probably because of all that negative energy and, you know, could have been. And where was the point where your husband was made aware that, uh, you know, that, you know, that his this... wife was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well we're, we're, we're all a bit, no. we're all a bit crazy, but yeah, but that um you know uh, there was this new this 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 new part of your life developing so he knew i meditated and i would sometimes come out and say holy camoli and i would i would get up from coffee time and say i'm going to go dance with the angels <laughs> so kind of was you know he, he definitely knew that it was a big thing and a very important thing to me and <clears throat> so i channeled the guides the first time and then there was about, it was just about four weeks of almost daily meditations, bringing things through. And during this time, um, I, I have to bring her in. Uh, Cindy was really getting insistent. So I would get these feelings and these knowings in my, in my mind of 
you have to tell my mom. You have to tell my mom. Now, did, I'm can, just can, I, can I ask you, sorry to butt in here, I hate doing this, right? People are going to hate me for this, but did you know of Cindy in the sense that obviously this, you, obviously you knew who Cindy was, right? What, what I mean is, right. did you know that, that this was the Cindy connected to your friend? I'm guessing there would be I no other Cindy. I did know. Yeah. So, no, I, oh, I knew it by an energetic knowing. Oh, right. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it wasn't, her, yeah. You, right. It was none of that. It was just, just an energetic it. knowing. Okay. Mm hmm energetic okay. that's the only way to say it an energetic knowing so she was giving me these and she would always come on this cheek and just she would just push and like I remember one particular time during that month it was about a four-week period and she is saying tell my mom tell my mom and I'm like then give me a sign do something I can't just go to this woman out of the blue she's known me for six years and say to her I'm talking to your daughter in the morning you know, I just can't do that. Give me a sign. Well, the first time I said that to, to her, she gave me the sign meatballs. So I say, all right, I'm going to somehow during my day, meatball is going to come into my mind. It didn't. And so I never opened my mouth. Okay. So that happens in the early part. I'm channeling daily. I'm finding uh, they're teaching me. It's beautiful. The The people I'm watching on YouTube are saying, validate that it's real by asking for signs. So, you know, like, okay, so, you know, you get this big knowing about something and then you say, okay, guides, give me a sign that this is you and not just my imagination. And something would drop into my head. I, I know in my first book, there's something about frogs. Do you think I saw a friggin' frog? Oh, hell no. No, I never got signs. And I still get very few signs. I got the physical manifestations. And for me, it has been a journey of faith, okay? So I'm believing it on the fact that I'm I'm just saying I couldn't be feeling all of this if it wasn't real. And so it's, and it's not a long period of time. So a little while into that, my, Cindy comes in again. She gives me the same damn sign, sign again, meatballs. And I, I say, okay, if I see it during the day, this is probably three weeks later, during that month of, of after I started channeling, she, I'm, I go, I don't hear anything about meatballs. I go to school. It's not on the lunch menu. The girls aren't talking about a recipe. I keep thinking, how am I going to hear about meatballs? I go to the clinical site. I'm in the lunchroom and my girl, one of my students who brought the same thing for lunch every single day, this frozen dinner thing, brings out a frozen dinner and it's friggin' penne pasta and meatballs. When I read that, my the energy just goes, whoosh. I felt like I was going to faint. I'm sitting in the break room at this nursing home. I can feel Cindy right here. She's pushing. She is pushing, insistent. We've got a deal. We've got a deal, she kept saying. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm in my head going, I can't go back and tell this woman. I can't, I can't, I can't. The whole drive home, I would be in my mind and I'd say, please, Cindy, just let me go home and meditate. Let me, I got to connect with my guides. I got to have time to connect with my guides. That energy, I was driving and that energy would be whoosh. And she would say, we had a deal. We had a deal. We had a deal. Just kept going in my mind. I'm like, oh my God in heaven. So I go to school. I have two really good friends at school. I go to the other one, not the mother. I, I'm freaking out. I tell her what's happening. They don't know about the meditating. They don't know about the channeling. And she says, you got to do it. You got to do it. And so I did. So then now both of my friends at school know it was beautiful. Cindy came through and gave her mother a hug. It was beautiful. It was just that knowing. She, The message was, Kelly is going to bring me through. Kelly is going to be a medium and Kelly's going to bring me through. But I'm not a medium yet. You got to remember that I'm not a medium yet. So where was Cindy's? Okay. So was Cindy's mum? She was working with you. Co-worker of mine. Uh, okay. So so who? So the, so the person with the meatballs. What was the? That was a that was one of my students. We were at the nursing home. They were doing their clinical experience. So we're we're having our lunch break at clinical. To become a CNA, you have to practice on people. So you go to a nursing home. So I've taken my group. I've driven in the van with my group of kids, and we've done work. And now we're having our lunch. And she pulls this kid who eats the same chicken and dumplings every day, pulls out this thing with meatballs. So 
I know I know it's the sign. Because how often do you see the word meatball in a run of a day, you know? What was she trying to push you for in that respect? For that's what I'm trying to get out she, here. What? She needed me, Cindy needed me to tell her mom that she was present, she was right there with her, and that I was going to eventually create a meeting between them. And how and that it was mom, okay. How did mom take that? Her mom take that when the- Oh my God, it was I mean, I walked in and I'm scared right to death. I shut the door. I locked the door. She's looking at me like, what the heck's going to happen now? You know, but I didn't want us to be interrupted. And I mean, we both cried, but, but she was so open and she was so, she's such a blessed woman anyway. And she's a very spiritual woman. And she has been, had been from the moment her child died, she felt her child's presence. She felt her, but her Catholic upbringing what wasn't allowing understood, her understood but right. but your okay. time with her then helped to heal was part part of the healing to, and part of right. your journey as well point. of development so it was a right. yeah so at this point mm-hmm. i stopped playing a game with the girls at school i asked their permission i've watched some youtube video that said about the ethics of this work and you should never dip into somebody's energy without permission blah blah, blah. so i mean i'm very ethical so i i I come come back away from school in my morning meditation and I reach out to both Lisa's dad and my other co-worker's daughter. And they give me stuff that I write down and I take it to school and I'm spot on. If I brought through 10 things, seven of them were spot on for both of them. Then the other friend, not, not, the, not the one with the daughter, but the other friend had lost her dad about a year before. The other friend, my, my, in my morning meditation, my guides say, you need to do a reading. And I'm like, okay. And so I make an appointment with Lisa. Now we're getting to the answer to your question. So I get, make an appointment with my friend, Lisa. I bring, th- I, we're going to do it tomorrow at three o'clock. We go home that day. I get up that morning and I just cry out to the universe. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. I'm scared. You got to do something. You got to help me. And Kevin, I got a download of step-by-step instructions. Minutia, just exactly what I would need. I would need to know what do I do next. They gave me step-by-step-by-step. They gave me the most beautiful download. So I was prepared. I went in. Everything I have heard about on YouTube, any other experiences, that's why I know my path is unique. They say that if you can get a link and hold it for even just a couple of minutes, it's a big deal. I connected to this woman's dad and I was connected for an hour. Not only did I bring through, and I'm not saying me, this is the this is them. This is them, not me. They brought through beautiful concrete evidence and then they blended his energy with mine and he was able to speak to his daughter. I had no idea that was going to happen. I had no idea. We were both crying. I mean, it was unbelievable. We were about 35 or 40 minutes in. And I mean, the snot is running. We need tissues. So we stop, get up. I move around the classroom, find the box of tissues, sit down, blow my nose. We're laughing. We're like, holy crap, can you believe this? And he hit me with another wave of energy. And I'm like, he's not done. And she had been holding something back and he knew it and he brought it out. He made her say it and he healed it. And it was the most beautiful thing in the world. So that night when I come home from school, Michael and I had cocktail hour. We fixed our toddies. We sat down on our love seat. We turned some music on or he got up to turn music on. And I said, my husband, my husband, Mike, that I've been married to happily for 41 years, I said, honey, let's hold off on the music. We need to talk. He hates those words. Typical husband hates those words. And I said, well, guess what I can do? (laughs) And I explained it to him. And my blessed, beautiful, wonderful man got tears in his eyes when I said to him, I can't not do this. And he, he cried and said, of course you can't. They've chosen you. And I said, I feel like that. And so he has been 100%. We don't, it's not like I channel for him or he's not part of it. He don't have any interest in that. 
but it's a hundred percent love and support. Well, that's that's amazing, but it's also it's not actually amazing, really. I, 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 that wasn't the, the words I wanted to say, but they came out. But um, I just wanted <laughs> to say that that was obviously in the life path that uh, he would be accepting accepting of that when you were ready. Oh, he's been my yeah. angel. Yeah. There was yes, one the support. Time in yeah. life, mm-hmm. There was one time in life when we'd been married about ten years that we almost got a divorce. Typical when I am stressed, I turn to spiritual stuff. He turns to being a douchebag, <laughs> which he did at that time. And we can be. We can be. <laughs> we, <huh? laughs> we can be. <laughs> yes, all of us can be. But so I got super hyper religious. I quit drinking. I, you know, I, I just, I bought into all the dogma. When we reconciled, we made a, a deal, and he'd boot my butt for saying this. We made a deal. He'd stop being a dickhead and I'd stop being a fundamentalist religious person. And so that's how we got in the middle. And my guides have told me many times now that he they utilized him because they didn't. If I'm so passionate about what I do and I feel it so strongly that if I'd gone down that true fundamental path, I'd have been a zealot. I mean, I'd have been a zealot. And oh yes. Have, well, maybe you've well, done it. Maybe you've done it in too many lifetimes before. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. It's not, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, he's my angel on okay. earth. He, he's my. He's the. You know how you buy helium balloons and they got that little rock heavy thing that's all sparkly and fun down bottom. He's that. He and I'm the helium balloon. That's that's how we work. No, that's beautiful. That's the, the yeah. Yep. Um, that's um. An important part, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? To have that to support there as well, most definitely. So, wow. Okay. Then she, the, Cindy had come, uh, well, has obviously moved on, had come in to, you know, say what she needed to say to, oh. for her to move on and the parents to move Or did she not move no, on? No, she, so I, I cut my teeth, so to speak, on several other mediumship times. I, I did, I had different sitters and I did different, I brought through different entities. I felt in my heart like I, because because her mom's grief was still so palatable, I needed to know that I wasn't going to screw anything up. And I was very focused. The, The one, I did one mediumship class and then my guides took away all our money so I couldn't do any more until I figured it out and then my money come back. And that's exactly what happened. I took one class and it was so focused on evidence that I would I would literally feel them pressing behind my face wanting to speak and I would hold them away until they would give me evidence. And now I, it just doesn't work that Well, way you didn't need me. that That's class what, then, did you? You didn't need that class. I yeah, yeah. No, I, didn't. And, I didn't, but it helped me get started. Um, so I was very focused on the evidence, but when Cindy came through, it was phenomenal because with up to that point, I'd brought the evidence through. She was so excited. Oh, my God. And her energy was just so beautiful and so oh, I'm going to cry just talking about it because she she just has been such a big part of my journey. And she still is. She still helps. I was going to ask you that. She's still. Yeah, she's still. With she's you. one of my guides. There's no question. She's one of my guides. She probably led her mother to the school and she probably led me to meditate i mean had you, had you met her in the physical before never 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 and i don't hear from her often now but i do hear from her sometimes so so yeah so i'm happily when when the energy came through of her it made it was when we were done i said to her mom do you have any doubts in your in your mind at all that this was your daughter. And she's like, absolutely none. She could feel it. She could feel it. Even though she didn't bring through like the jump through hoops kind of evidence that is fun when it comes through because it's all ooh and wow and all that kind of stuff. Do you think that you've done this in previous lifetimes that that's why it's such a sort of fast track pace for you that you've done this before actually. And uh, you're just, you know, re-remembering in a sense, or it's just like, you know, I've I've never asked them, but one thing I ha- that I do know that has to do with the speed of this, they they gave me a beautiful download a few months ago, and they it ta- they told they showed me this crystalline grid. I mean, and you hear people talk about it as the web, you know, the interconnectedness of whatever. Well, it, it, in this particular download, they called it a crystalline grid, 
And they said that every time any of us on any path, any religious path, any doctrine, any whatever, just a basic Joe living his human life, when you have that moment of love and connection with whatever it is, you are creating a thread of energy that is going into the bridge between you and your higher self. And that thread of energy never goes away. So I've been praying with my heart open and full of love since I was probably eight or nine years old, seven or eight years old. So I think I had built that bridge. So when I finally allowed myself to surrender to it, I ran across it. That's how they explained. That's how they explained it to me. I, as far as other lives, they've they have definitely given me a lot of information about that and about which was very difficult because they have said that we have all been everything. So that means we've been the bad side too, which I really hate, don't like to think about, but we have. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, I, absolutely. that was new to me. Yeah, I, that was new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I, I think that's probably quite true, actually. So we've got three different types of modality. We've got the channeling. We've got the mediumistic side. Um, we've got the light language as well. But just sticking, let's just, you understood the difference between the difference between channeling and um, the mediumship. And, and can I ask you that? You know, what, what is the difference for you, obviously? Um. Okay. Or, or actually, do you feel there is much of a difference in some respects? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Because if you think about, Kevin, if you think about what we know about the soul and what we know about the personality being that tiny, tiny little fragment, when I connect with that tiny, tiny little fragment, it's a very, it's a very specific thing. When I connect to the all, it's a very, very specific thing. It's very, it is very different. The all is always there. You know, the guy, whether let's, we, it doesn't matter what we call them, my guides, my team, non-physical energy, God, it doesn't matter what we call them. It's the, it's creation. It, that is always there. And that is what brings through and comes through on frequencies. And so if I'm doing a, a channeled session with somebody, it means that someone is either going through something in their life or they have questions that they need answers to and they need to connect to a higher source of, of wisdom. And so people can ask questions and I can channel the answers to them. Um, mediumship is I am specifically reaching out for the personality of someone who went who's passed. And um just recently, nothing ever stays the same for me. Within the last seven days, the way I do mediumship readings has changed because they told me it had to. I'm too, my essence is, is incredibly open and they don't want me reaching out to blend anymore. They want me reaching to blend with them and then they're going to bring it through. I was reaching because that's what that class said to blend with the person, but I've had two experiences where it wasn't good for me to do that. It was good for the sitter. The person I was bringing through got exactly what they needed, but it took its toll on me. And normally when I channel, I feel great. My energy's good and, and whatnot. So they just said that it, I just need to do it a little bit different. So yeah, so there is a big difference between channeled and, and um, the mediumship. And then the light language is its own is its own thing that goes quite strongly with the channeled reading because almost always the channeled reading is going to bring up something that then they're going to drop into my head bring through the light language and it's like the light language is the fire hose that puts the fire out you know or the healing or the i don't i don't know what no. Absolutely. I mean, the light language can seem um, a little bit strange to some people, but then um, I guess you could say that there is the, the healing from the light language that, that you've been a, a witness to as well. Light language is powerful. Light language is powerful. So on this year of, of discovery, I'm bebopping along. You know, I do my first mediumship reading in March, a year ago this month. And um, 
And so I'm practicing. I'm out online. I've got friends. I'm practicing. I'm trying to get experience, but I'm also trying to follow the rules of that class, which was not what I should have been doing. But hindsight's 2020. I didn't know. I just doing the best I can, trying to, trying to, oh, and I did want to say, because you asked me about how did I know I, you know, that I wasn't crazy. When I did, it was only a month between the first channeling and bringing through the, um, my first mediumship reading. When I brought through all that concrete evidence, that was, that was very comforting to me. So I can bring through beautiful evidence. And now it's like, okay, now it's all fitting together. This, it, I know I'm not nuts. <laughs> Uh, at least one would assume. So I'm going along my merry way. I'm doing these mediumships. I'm trying to develop. I want to help people. I know it. it. It was such a beautiful thing for my friend at work, for both of them. They both felt tremendous relief and, and you know, not a release from their grief, of course, but it certainly helped. It certainly helped. So I wanted to help people. I had an, uh, in my first book, there's Shirley and Phil is my first cousin. That was a family member that passed away and I was able to bring him through. And it was very, very healing. So I'm going along my merry way thinking, well, this is it. I'm just going to get better and better. And I'm in meditation one morning. School has ended. So I'm finally just starting on my world of, of retirement. And I lay back in meditation. I'm talking right along like I do. I'm channeling my guides. And all of a sudden, my hands, I'm leaning back, my hands start to go, and this different language comes out of my mouth. And it is just going, it is just going. And I'm hearing it, and I'm in my head, and I won't say it because I'm trying to be better with my swearing, but I was like, oh, <clears throat> when it started happening. And I, I holler to my guides in my mind, I'm like, what the heck, what's going on? I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, because I was, because it started at my feet and my body just started to tremble. I'm trembling all over. My hands are going all, and my fingers are doing all this weird stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? And my guides with their typical <laughs> calmness said, then stop. And I'm like, is this for my highest good? And this all happens in a second. You know, it's all, it's nothing. It's a blending. And I'm like, is this for my highest good? And they said, yes, it is. And I said, all right, then I said, don't leave me. And they said, we'll never leave you. They, so they pulled their energy right around me, like in a hug, but they left the front open and my hands were going and that the light language ran its course. And then I'm like, after it was done, I'm like, so what does this mean? What do I do with this? What is this? Every time I start to get comfortable, they add something. It's great. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's all normal, right? It's all just. I guess part of the it's my new normal, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And as long as it helps people. Yeah. So, so of well, course, in, yeah. in my meditations after that, of course, I was asking my guides, what is this? What is this? And they said, they basically said that it it falls into categories because I can. I can be doing dishes and thinking about what I'm going to cook for supper and light language can just flow. And I'm not even thinking about it. And I'm like, so what's that? And they said, anytime light language is spoken on this dimension, it raises the frequency. So it's like when I'm out walking or housekeeping or whatever, I let the light language go, even though I'm thinking about something else. But then there's a light language blessing. Well, before that, the other thing they do is when I first started to channel, it came through at a pace that I could translate quite easily. Now it's like downloads of knowings with pictures and things happening in my mind very, very quickly. When that happens and it gets overwhelming and I can't make any sense, I will bring light language will start to come through. I don't bring it through. It will just start to come through. And it's like it just calms everything down so I can make sense out of stuff. If I'm doing a mediumship reading, and the, they start like sometimes two or three will come in and they're all excited and they're all talking at once. Light language will come. It settles the energy and it will it will facilitate. But then when there's a light language, a call for a light language blessing, it is I will be doing like a channeled reading for somebody. It happened. I did one just yesterday. And in the back of my mind, they just whisper, bring through a blessing. It's like, OK. And I will tell my, they always have told me to have people put their feet flat on the floor to sink into their heart. I connect myself to them. And um, 
we ground. It's important to ground. Mother Earth needs to hold us tight because this you can fly. There's no question. And um, the light language will come through in whatever way it's going to. And it's different every time. And new dialects come through. I'm just along for the ride, Kevin. <laughs> Um, amazing journey so far we've got two books here right mm. uh, which we're going to just just briefly touch upon as well I just want to say as well can you just talk about the services that you offer just very briefly and how people can get in contact with you as well okay well um, my, I'm on Facebook Kelly Newt N-U-T-E Bowker um, you can reach out and friend me that would be lovely I, I do have a Facebook page that's Kelly Bowker Medium and um, you can you know, contact contact me through the messaging on both of those. Um, we are going to post my email address. Certainly, can reach out to me through email. And I've actually even put my phone number is on the back of my new book, my second book. Um, and it is on. I have a YouTube channel now uh, called Present uh, Present Moment Magic. And wouldn't I post it with a misspelled word? I misspelled the word present. They keep me humble. There's no question. I had a girlfriend say, and it, it had been up for like two weeks. You know, you misspelled the word present. I, and she said, was you meaning to? I said, yep, we're going to go with that. It, it's the present of, <laughs> no, I frigged up. I can't spell. <laughs> so so I am putting lots of, of content out. They'll We'll wake up in the morning and the guides will just say, I asked them one day, I said, I want to do a YouTube video. What should we talk about? And they said, sit down start your video and ask. And I'm like, okay, then. So I did. And they just came through and it was beautiful. It was about inner child work and they've got so much to share. It's just amazing. Yes. And we'll put all those links in the description below. Yep. And obviously your books and uh, yeah, some of your contact awesome. details have been coming up on the screen and we'll do throughout this interview. So yeah people can get what they feel pulled to get. And sometimes even if they don't know, I'm not too sure, but they feel pulled to come see you, you'll know what they need. Um, right. I do. When they've, um, you know, I don't, with you. I shouldn't, I don't, but the, but the yes, guides do. Yes. Yeah. Because, because my guides connect with their guides. And like, even when they make an appointment, like, like we, you and I made this appointment for this interview, I sent my guides to your guides to talk. And, you know, it's like, I, I consciously do that. I'm like, let's get together to make this the most greatest experience for all of us so that we possibly can, you know, because I was nervous and, you know, it's a, it's a big deal to me. So I could share just a, a little bit about the writing of my books, I think would be. I would love to. That was going to be my next question, really, awesome. because, um, you know, here we are and uh, you, you're just on this massive kind of like fast track. And then we've got two books. I mean, where did that come from? How? Two books in yeah. the last six months. Um, so light language came in in June. I'm still practicing. I'm trying to follow their directions as best I can, as they are now teaching me how to integrate light language into doing mediumship readings, which creates a very powerful, powerful thing. I can I can sh definitely say that. And so I'm kind of learning about that, reconciling my brain to the change. I get mad at them sometimes because it's like, good Lord, you know, <laughs> So they have to they have to work with me through that because I get a little pissed off and it's like all right slow stuff down a little, but then we come we rally. So I was on the phone with a friend who was talking about writing and I said you know I ought to write my story, but as has been established I can't spell. The idea of sitting down with a pen and paper just didn't appeal to me, and. I got up in the morning after she and I talked about the book and I just sat down at my computer and I, they guided me and they said, just sit down and start, just start. You don't have to have any big vision, just start. So I sat down and I found the dictation uh, tab on the word. And so I was able to dictate it. And I will share with all of you, the first book is my story. It is not well written. It is full of typos. I didn't know how to do paragraphs. I just it's a hot mess, but it's my story. And it the person who would benefit from reading that story is the one who's experiencing what I'm experiencing. Because I wish I'd had a resource like that that would have helped to validate that these things happen. This is normal. 
And my gosh, it can happen. I'm 60. That there's no timeline. You know, I, I say that to them and they're like, my gosh, you know, you got a lot of life left to live. You know, every day is a new day. Every moment's a new day. So, you know, you just have to, it would be helpful to someone like that. So I sat down thinking I was going to write my story and very quickly they took over and it's a lot of channeled material. And, and the channeled material is very helpful. It's about how to live and reconcile what is important. You know, I needed to let all that, the Christian rules and regulations I had to, they had to reconcile with this new way of living. How do I know what's right and wrong? Well, they tell me, you know, there is no wrong. That's the big thing, which is really quite confusing, but it's the truth. So that's the first book. <clears throat> the second book, the minute I overcame my fear of, of technology and I was able to get it out onto Amazon, it was on the weekend when it when I got the email saying that it was available. That Monday, I sat down to start my second book, knowing exactly what my second book was going to be. I, I, their idea was to leave the first book at kind of a cliffhanger when the light language came through with all the questions and the chaos that was in my mind. That was their idea. Leave it as a cliffhanger. So I'm thinking, well, of course, I'm going to pick right up and go. Oh, no, they have a whole different idea of what I'm going to do. And it took me about four different starts to get writing to know what they wanted. They wanted a real time. This is how you live with this. That, that's what they wanted. And so it would it the first half of the book is me sharing struggles, and then they give me tips and tricks and strategies about establishing your frequency. We it's all about the present moment. It's where are we vibrating right now? That's what's going to bring the next thing to us. I thought we were moving towards stuff. We're not. We are collapsing the timeline to us. And it's all according to where, what our frequency is vibrating at. What out of all of the infinite next moments that there could be, what moment are you resonating with? Is it going to be the shit moment or is it going to be the joy moment? And it's as simple as that. That is how we create our world. And so the first half of the book is all that kind of thing. And the, the knowings that we need to understand that. That's that's where I'm going to leave it. I love that then for a I title. Said, <laughs> pardon shit, me? I love that for a title, the shit or the joy moment. <laughs> <laughs> the shit or the joy moment. That's right. That's it, great. Ah! It does come down to that sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Book it's number like... three. Book yeah. number three. Um, Please continue. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, no, that's fine. <clears throat> so um, I sit down. I've written quite a lot. I'm feeling that feeling like, um, I, you know, I wonder how the book is going to end because I've got quite a lot already kind of feeling. I sit down and ask, what are we going to do today? And they drop into my mind a picture of a book that I own. I bought this book probably 25 years ago, and it's a book about angels. And I knew exactly where it was because earlier in the summer, I'd gone downstairs and dug around and found it because I thought I now that I know more about this stuff, I'd read about the angels, but I never did. Um, I went and found the book and they said, Write the names of the angels into this document. I'm like, oh, okay. So in the very first page of the book is the chapters are all the different names of the angels. I'm like, okay. So I write these names of these angels. Then I say, what now? And they say, each angel will come through. And Kevin, I have a full-blown smack in the face spiritual anxiety attack. I... I get so overwhelmed. I'm sobbing. I, I'm like, who the hell am I to think I can dial 1-800-ANGEL? Who, who am I to think this? How do I do that? I, I just, they said, I mean, there's a list of nine names and I'm going to connect individually, they're telling me. to, And it just blew, it, it blew, short-circuited my circuits. It truly did. So they took me through a process, which I now can look back and I know the angels were, the, the angels are part of this whole thing, but I didn't know it at the time. You have to learn, right? So they brought me through and it was about releasing. They gave me a beautiful process about releasing unworthiness and how to do that. They gave, And I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do a video on it for my YouTube channel because it's beautiful. And I know that reading it 
doesn't give you the full impact of it. You, I think you need to hear me talk you through it. So I'm going to do that. So I release all of this stuff about unworthiness. And then Angel Ariel came through. She was the first angel. And I literally was able to bring each angel through. They're the angels of the chakra system. I had no idea how important the chakra system is in all of my meditation and everything. I would skim across that. It seemed too hokey for me. I don't know. It just didn't resonate until it did. Um, there is a team of angels that work with and through the chakra system. And the second part of my book, Establishing Your Frequency, is each angel coming through and each angel builds on the last angel until finally the last angel was the angel. Um, and it is the art because I, I, I asked him, it's the archangel Michael. And I mean, you talk about feeling humbled to talk person to person practically. I don't see them, but to Archangel Michael, I mean, he gave me a beautiful, beautiful download. And it was about the con that we are the connection between Mother Earth and the cosmos, and that that the the energetic system that was given to humans to help them deal with life and emotion, we have a whole team of angels that are ready and waiting to facilitate that, and that it is powerful when we call on them specifically, that it works anyway. Everyone's chakra system is either open, closed, blocked, not, regardless. But when you take a more direct, this is from them, when you take a more direct path and an intentional calling out to these angels to balance, and they even used the word hack. They said, and I, and so I said, that's too trendy. When they said it to me, I'm like, that's too trendy. They're going to think that I'm making this up. And they said, no, this, the energy of your world is moving so fast. That's why everything is able to be hacked. We don't need all of the foundation of stuff that we used to need because energy is moving too fast. We need the hacks because it's so fast. And so like how to balance your energy system, how to connect to Mother Earth, all these tips and tricks and hacks that it are just, it's incredible. It's just incredible. So yeah, that's that's the second book. So if I were going to recommend a book, I would recommend the second book, which is available on Amazon. It is called, I'll, I'll even grab it. And you can see I've got my, little thing because I'm reading it. This is not a book that you're just going to read. It's a book that you're going to study. And and I, it's a book I'm going to study because I don't remember it all. And there's so much power in it. Yes. And this was through the same sort of dictation ship yet yeah, yeah, all channeled. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, thank exactly. you. Thank you for sharing all this with us. Um, oh, and I know lot. the I know well, the interview could just be about the book. Do you know what I mean? There's, 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 yeah. um, uh, it, it just book two, uh, the one that you've got there. Uh, well, maybe interview number two could be. Well, maybe absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Well, I, I just you know when you when you you got a book like that, you, they, you can go so deep into each chapter. Do you know what I mean? So, okay. Yeah, there's one chapter that's called um, "Why Do Bad Things Happen." Yes, I and saw that. Mm -hmm. I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried to wrap my mind around the truths that they gave me, and that's all I'm going to say about it because. It it's just incredible. Maybe but we can get sense. into that. Okay, so um, how easy is it for you to sort of switch that channeling side on? Easy, pretty easy. They're right here. I can feel them. Oh, I'm <laughs> they're sure they're always they supporting me. I'm they're sure always they supporting. Me. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Yep. So I'm going to share with you what how light language plays a part in this. That when I start to connect. Um, light language will come. Sometimes it's very whispery. Sometimes it's louder. Um, and we'll just follow the directions of it. I've asked them about my hand gestures and they said that the hand gestures have to do with, uh, sacred geometry and that's all they've told me about it, but it's not under my control when it happens. Um, so I just would ask anyone listening to this, take a breath into your heart and just send your energy down to mother earth. 
Breathe into your heart as I connect my heart to yours. And they are right here with us as I connect with them for our highest good. Good morning. Do you have questions for us? Absolutely. So now we are going into overtime, which is great because uh, uh, I've got so many questions to ask you. But obviously, I know we've got limited time here as well. So firstly, j just from my sort of inquisitive mind, has Kelly done this before? Because I'm getting the feeling that this is all just, you know, rehearsed and, you know, it's all been done before in a sense. It's just a re-remembering. The human's perspective of before and after is flawed by its very nature. The present moment is the only moment in time. So when you say, has she done it before? Yes, in it, to your understanding of needing to have that linear perspective, one would say, yes, she has absolutely done this before. This connection has been present for infinity. Okay, so when you're saying that, I'm almost thinking, okay, yeah, well, just let's go up to the understanding then that maybe all time is one, right? Even, even though it feels separate and that she's doing it in other realities, other lifetimes that we would call it, but it's all now. All now, exactly. This one has had a very difficult time understanding that concept. So let us speak about time. When you decide to come forward into this incarnation, into this dimension, you come forth and you make agreements, you decide that you will experience duality, you will experience linear space and time. Um, these are all human aspects. They are not realities in our dimension. From where we are, there is no time. When you talk about reincarnation, this is probably the easiest way for us to explain this to you. Because up to this point, as this one has learned about reincarnation and understood the pr principles of it, she wasn't able to realize that those are all happening now too. There's a very important aspect that that understanding leads you to. And that aspect is that the work you can do in the present moment can have a rippling effect across all timelines, all dimensions, all incarnation. This is a new concept that we want to bring forward for you. It is a difficult thing for the human to wrap their mind around. Even the thought of, of reincarnation, having many, many aspects of the whole that is your soul incarnated in different experiences, this in itself is a very complex thing. But to wrap your mind around it all happening now really can short circuit the human. But obviously we're ready to hear that in some respects, people watching this are. It is necessary for you to hear that. We are at a time, dear one, where the energy of your planet is moving at such a high frequency and those like this one and like yourself that is bringing these knowings forward because of the wonderful capabilities of your internet and the communication that this time period holds for you, that this is when we have shown this one the idea of it's overwhelming to her that where we'll speak of this, but we have shown her the idea that in her understanding of the rapture being the end times, that the human would have the experience of 
being right here and then being right here. And that this incarnation would keep on going. That isn't exactly the way she understood it, but it is what we're trying to help her wrap her mind around. That the higher your frequency goes and the higher you evolve in this incarnation, number one, you have effects across all of your Hmm, she struggles for the word, the many fractals, let us say, of the oversoul or the all or the whole. The part that is the all, that is the, the wave in the ocean, so to speak, that makes up Kelly or makes up Kevin. All of those experiences are happening now. And yes, your evolution in this moment can have an effect on all of those incarnations. But there is a step beyond that that we're trying to help her to see within her mind to explain that you can be living your life and your frequency can be at this high level right here. And so the timeline before it collapses to the wonderful, joyous experiences that are coming. The person beside you is not at that frequency. It does not mean, dear ones, that you will not on this timeline have an experience of this one here. You will have them in your experience. This is what is hard for her to wrap her mind around, that though their vibration might be on a different trajectory and their experience that they're having is over here in a lower vibration, in that vibration, they will as well have a, an experience of Kelly. They will probably see her with great pity because she has lived with this rainbow and unicorn way of thinking all of her life. And they are so pragmatic. But she is also over here with her rainbows and her unicorn. This is a very, very deep concept. But the energy of your planet is ready. We are here. This is what we're wanting to bring through. That is why the angels of the chakra system came through. Because those of you who are in this mm, exploratory, dipping your toe into the, the, the understandings, if you can utilize the knowings of those angels to bring the power of your chakra system on board and the grounding that will happen in Mother Earth, you will have the ability to reach to those frequencies that are calling you in order to raise the frequency of your planet. It doesn't take all that many of you to be at this level, to bring that that up. Yes, but some of those frequencies that are calling you sometimes, thank you for that, some of those frequencies that are calling you sometimes, uh, you, with our human eyes, may we could say to ourselves, well, that's, is that, is that a high calling? But it's, well, it's calling us, though. And, you know, for some of us, it may be, and this, this happens for some people, you know, that they, 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 they want to do something completely different, yeah? Uh, which some people may be like, like, well, that's not very, you know, the high calling, you know, whatever it may be, you've got your OnlyFans page or wh wh whatever it is, right? Yeah, that, that doesn't always seem, you know, such a... Yes, such, you uh, speak of the but it's, wonderful propensity for judgment that humans have. This is what I'm trying to that say. Every, yeah, yeah, what we judge. It, it, exactly. Yeah. That every experience is brought up and looked at with that. That was one of the agreements we've spoken of. The duality, is it good, is it bad? What we are teaching this one is, is, it is an experience. The only, when you say you're feeling a calling and there's an unsureness, we would say to you, does it get you excited? Do you feel that passionate call? Do you feel the joy and in in your juice is running? That is the path, dear one. And that path for you and that path for Kelly, and that path for this one over here is going to be different. The pitfall is when you sit in your glorious path, looking at that path with judgment. 
that will lower your frequency and the next moment will not be as high as it should have been. But this is my point, right? Is that, you know, uh, as you said that what you're, what I feel that you're saying is, and which is a lot of them are saying right now as well, is, you know, purpose, living passion, living, especially in the most craziest of times right now, right? When right. the world seems like it's falling apart, right? And the potential of all sorts of horrible things, you know what? Get into that passion. Get into whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. And without the judgment to yourself or to others of what they're doing, Absolutely. there's something so important, isn't there, of, of living this purpose out, this passion out, that it's, it's like uh, someone said to me, it's like adding to the tapestry. We're adding exactly. our bit, others are adding theirs as well. And it, exactly. it's it's not all about what we, you know, putting on the robes and, you know, kumbayas and, you know, getting exactly. into spiritual circuits and drumming things and this stuff. One, it's this about one is coming very, here to having a human experience. This one is very determined because of the dogma of her younger years. She wants people to hear her cuss and to talk about the cocktails at night. Because as a child, she was told that that was a sin. And that that made her less than the idea of any of that kind of thing. And so now she wants people to glory in any experience that feels good to them. It does not matter, dear ones, what you do. It matters where you vibrate while you do it. When you are connected to your higher self and you are living in this passion, you're not going to feel compelled to do the atrocities that that is an, the the reason that the reason that the atrocities happen is for those like you and Kelly to take that bounce and find the path that's over here but if you can sit in the energy of viewing and this she struggles greatly with viewing the atrocity with compassion for the perpetrator because for that perpetrator to have been pure positive energy on the other side and to make the choice to come forward into this world to perform the atrocities for the learning of those others, though they have forgotten it during this incarnation, they have lowered their vibration. They made that choice out of love. So if you can look at the murderer and the rapist, and this is difficult for Kelly to even speak these words as she's back here having a fit. But if you can look at them and you can see them with love and compassion, then, dear ones, you are collapsing that timeline that has that highest, greatest, joyous thing for you. And the atrocities can fade away. They don't have to be part of your existence. I mean, I've spent time with a murderer and I've spent time with the victim's family. Um, more briefly with the victim's family, but more time with the murderer. Um, and There's I've only spent. There's great lessons I, in there. Yeah, there is, there, there is. I've only spent. I mean, they, they, you know, they were very sorry. Very sorry for what they'd done. And um, it, it took the system that we have in place for them to get to that point, right? the losing of their their freedom and everything else that goes with it, right? And and the destruction that it not only did to the family that they did it to, but their own family as well, for the repercussions that it had on it, because there's so much repercussion from that. Um, yes, uh, I, I, I sort of understand what you're saying. It, it's the compassion for every... It's very difficult though, isn't it? Um, it is. You know, and, is. And, and even speaking to the victim's family, still 40 years cannot forgive not ready to um, and, and yeah. there there is there will be the learnings that will come from this experience and this incarnation for that individual whether it happens on this side of the veil or on the next side of the other side of the veil and that is what we have been trying to teach Kelly when we have given her this vision of doing her mediumship in a different way because when you blend with these fractals that are the personalities that hasn't made its way back to the whole, the oneness yet, it is very upsetting and, and the energy is far removed from where this one vibrates. That's why it was so 
disruptive and almost physically challenging to her to do. Oh yes, absolutely. And even for the soul so, that's gone, even for the soul that's gone through that, you know. Um, exactly. I, I guess com- coming back into a reality of something greater than you even understood was possible because you had forgotten it all coming down here and having gone through that shatteredness, the shattering the soul, you know, in such a violent way in a sense, right. For those that go through that. Yeah. I mean, uh, but realize the important thing we want you to hear and that for your listeners to hear the biggest, most important thing is they did it deliberately with consciousness that the victims The soul that is the victims and the soul that is the perpetrator made an agreement on the other side. This is not an easy thing for people to hear. We understand that, dear ones, and we say it with all love. But this was agreed to for the life lessons that would happen on this turn on the merry-go-round. This is exactly what was intended. And so if you can find, does that change that human incarnation? Does that mean you want to, you know, make yourself vulnerable because they at one time were this beautiful light? Of course not. We're not saying that. The incarnation is the incarnation. They have completely removed themselves from their higher self. And that is why they're able to perform these atrocities. But they have the same calling that you do to call themselves back to their higher self in this incarnation, even in the incarnation where they did the atrocities. Yes. So you could say to yourself, you know, well, we we feel sometimes we've committed our own small atrocities. Do you know what I mean? In some of our actions down here. And actually, you know, uh, it's happening on all sorts of different levels, isn't it? Um, You know, and and that's again, learning. Everything's everything's here to learn. And that's going on within this idea that you spoke about initially which is the, the you know the idea that there is no time that other lifetimes may, maybe the the uh, victim and the perpetrator are playing out in another lifetime the different reverse role and that's actually happening in real time and they, they are ex- that is exactly what is happening that's exactly what is happening yep. the idea of the hierarchy of bad is another one of our messages that we want to bring through, again, causes great distress to this one. From the perspective of source, the atrocity is no different than the gossiping about someone. There is no difference. It is an action that you are disconnected from your higher self when you do it. There is no sin. There is no disappointing us. We, it is all happening at once, remember, there's no time. So we we don't want you to get too tied up with this, but we do not say that the atrocity that happened is worse than the getting pissed off at your husband and calling him names. The, there is no difference. It is the experience and what do you learn and gain from the experience? How quick do you bring yourself back to center? And that can be related as well to what's going on in the the, the greater world as well, you know, with um, exactly. with the collapses exactly. of banks right now, the um, ongoing conflicts in other parts of our world, ongoing tensions with other parts of the world right now. Um, the uh, only power we have in any of those things for the human in this moment in time is to send compassion. Send compassion to the the bank send compassion to the wars send compassion and knowing that it all is working out for the greater good because it is on the timelines of the people who are lined up with the greater good thank you for that so firstly uh, i just want to say when we're living in purpose that's the most that that's it that's a really important place to be and regardless of what's going on around the world and everything else um living and doing what you feel pulled to do and 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 joy from uh, that has a big effect in the times even now that we live in it's, it's some sort of ripple effect isn't it to others follow your passion exactly we are not the only entities that are speaking this we are all coming through those like kelly that are allowing it with a very similar message. You of all people know that. We are saying, 
follow the joy, follow the joy. It is all happening now. And it it is all the highest good is available to all of us without wrapping your human minds around all of these things have to happen before this can happen. No, no, it's right now in this well, moment. I'll share something with you. You know, um, um, people like me or uh, people bringing this message out from yourself to to a bit of a wider audience. You know, uh, uh, I think I'm the I'm the one. I feel sometimes that that's having to learn it the, the not the mo- not more than anyone else but definitely having to learn it there's no escape for me just because I'm you know there's no escape for me to just bring it through and say well la di da I don't have to you know do any of that work well actually that's exactly what's happened to, happening to me it, 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 this this whole thing of living your passion um I'm having to learn that the 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 big way uh, and and hence why I've gone through my particular situation which I will share with my audience one day um so uh yeah i'm i'm not a, a immune from that i just want to add that this, um, one, this yeah. one has had a very keen sense watching you over the past months and and even years the the your it, there has been a definite fluctuation in your energy and she has wondered about all of it but what we would say to you kevin is that you're reaching to want to know all of the pieces before you move. And that is where you trip. We would say this to all humans. When This is why we use the term redefining faith with Kelly, because if the present moment has joy, you can sit in ultimate knowing that the next moment will have the joy too. You don't have to be able to see how it's going to get there. The universe has such a much vast greater ability to dream up miraculous unfoldings for you that as a human, you can't even fathom. You, the, the way that we nudged the email that came from you to stop her from, from spending a bunch of money that she couldn't afford to spend is a perfect example. Live in the moment with the joy and the next moment is going to happen and going to come. It's it's so simple, and, and yet if you're not in that moment, though, yeah. But if you're not in that moment, and you're resisting even stopping the moment to switch to something else through fear of not knowing if the next, you know, if that whatever, do you know what I mean? Whatever the human conditions going on, uh, th- th- and those le- that lesson can carry on until you're going to make a change. <laughs> until you until you are ready, and that's why all the chaos of your world is happening. Because there are many, many that are not ready. They require the chaos and the destruction and the loss and the, all of it. They, do, they require that to bring them to their knees, so to speak, to be at the place of allowing this connection to, to happen. Well, you say they require it, but yet if you th- when I think about it from this perspective, my limited perspective is that, well, hang on, they're coming, they're coming here to incarnate in here knowing knowing of what they're getting into knowing of of, of that experience they're going to have when they were never that before they had the experience they were just the the knowing that the experience was available to them if i'm making sense so that they're going with free will into it is what i'm trying to say you are born into the potential and there are some pre-agreements that do happen when you make your choices to come forward that it isn't like the perpetrator of the atrocity says, I'm going to go forth and do X, Y, and Z. It isn't like that. But they choose that difficult path that we know has the ability to remove them from their higher self, to make, to deaden the voice within. The awful things that happen in childhood, you know of what we speak, those kinds of things, there are people that go through those things and find their way quickly back to love. But there are those that it fractures them completely. So then the atrocities happen. It all is playing itself out for all of humanity to be able to look upon it, to cast your eyes upon it. Find the perspective of source in 
the objective, it is just an experience and it is but a moment in time. You want to think that this war in the Ukraine is dragging and dragging and suffering has happened. From our perspective, it is but a heartbeat. When you can wrap your mind around that perspective, then, dear ones, it allows you to send the compassion and then turn into your own joyous life, your own joyous path. We're and, not sure that we answered exactly what I you think, were asking. No, I think you did, uh, I, I, but uh, it all makes it, it all makes sense, right? I'm, uh, this one is confused a lot of the time. <laughs> well, um, I get that. Yeah, I mean, this is a high a higher energy that's working through her, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot, isn't it? She mentioned Kelly did before as well about. Um, the idea that uh, well, she sort of touched upon the law of attraction, but it just in a very different, in a kind of a different way. That uh, I don't know, just on a, as a final message, if you just want to touch upon that, because obviously I think that's something that we're all working on sometimes. Yes. So we would say this: you are all in this moment perfect and loved just exactly where you are in this moment. When Kelly gets confused, when ideas and, and awakenings happen that overwhelm her, we whisper gently and with love in her ear, go back to basics. And that is what we will whisper to all of you. Basics is breathe into your heart. Breathe into your heart and feel the love that source energy has for you in the perfection of this moment. You are God experiencing itself. This is exactly what is supposed to be happening. And you are doing marvelously and we are not keeping score. The, the parting idea that we would love to give to all of you is that the, the, the moment that has passed is gone. We don't hold it. We are only seeing the moment that you're in now. And if you can find your way back to that moment of love, that is the truth. That is the only truth. That is the truth that's calling you through your lifetime. The truth to find what is creation? Creation is made up of love. Why does God experience itself, themselves? Because of the love and the want and the desire to expand. It is all part of the big the big picture, dear ones. So go back to basics. Love yourself with your whole heart. Start there. Ask yourself in the morning, what do you want to do to play today? You, that is, there's no greater gift than you can give because that, that is the connection that you will find through that connection of self-love. Which is your version of the answer of, of, in the sense, you know, when we talk, you know, even touching upon, you know, uh, the law of attraction and stuff, really forget about all that. That all comes into play when you come from the perspective that you're talking about there. You wouldn't you wouldn't care about law of attraction if you if you came from that perspective you you kind of talk about there. Yeah, that, that, that yeah. We, we would bring the story that we gave this one. We reminded her of the feeling. When you speak of the law of attraction, we had her put in her second book. Remember that night before Christmas, many of you, and looking at the Sears and the robot catalog and with your pen circling, not knowing that Santa had a budget, not having any idea that there was any limitations, that it was all possible. That feeling in your heart of it, Oh, the next greatest, wonderfulest, bestest thing is coming. That is how you create. The energy of that, if you can do all of the tips and tricks in her book and many, many others that are out there to raise your vibration, to have that essence of expectation, it all will fall into place. We love to see you play with your money and your cars and your good things. We love all that. It, there's no, there is no judgment around that, but it's the joy that you do it with. The person who is in the midst of the horror can find that same love and joy. 
that the person who's sitting in the brand new car with the seat full of money can. It, it is a difficult thing for humans to wrap their minds about, but to answer that question of how do we create our reality? How do you get the next best thing that's coming? You expect it, you send it out to us and we will send you the energy that will just fill your heart and you will draw to you out of the infinite possible potentials that could be your next moment. The best one is the one that will collapse into your experience. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm out of human time as much as you're out of your uh, out of time as well, right? Uh, literally. Um, listen, I, I, this energy um, that I'm speaking to right now, um, it's different. I'll say that to some of the other energy I've spoken to, and I don't know. Right now, we're about fifty-fifty. There's uh, a little uh, Kelly right, back in. Uh, oh, I know, I know, I know. I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But, but whatever remains, uh, thank you. Well. They are very excited about this path. You know, I, I know that they are. And, and I, I just so thank you, Kevin, because I, I know that interviews like this and opportunities like this are what can get their message out. And it is a little bit different. I've listened to this stuff for oh, years. No, no, no. When did, at the very beginning and obviously throughout, but at the beginning when you shifted off, um, yeah, I I I I noticed the change. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was like, I was like, um, what well, this ain't Kelly, this ain't Kelly anymore. <laughs> um, so it, I mean, I'm there through the whole thing, and I oh, get I, nervous. I, I, Human I, Kelly, like no, when you they let it, you you let you got out of the way. Yeah, well, I'm glad they said that all I had to do. I've never done this, step, Kevin. We I've never now. done. This. You have now. I have now. Listen, yep. your ways to contact you just very briefly, just for the end of this podcast are? Yes. So join me on Facebook, Kelly Newt Bowker or Kelly Bowker Medium. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is called Present Moment Magic, because that is where the magic happens. And um, my books are available, redefine, uh, Establishing Your Frequency and Redefining Faith are both available on Amazon. and. I'm just so thrilled to be and humble, truly humble, to be able to bring their message through. Thank you so much. Well, you did it. And I just want to say um, that was a great interview. And just thank you very, very much. And I hope you can join us again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.